Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy G Wiz coming to you from China. I want to thank everybody for uh, watching the videos and welcome to my new subscribers here to my YouTube channel. So yeah, I am here in uh, Taitung, China. It's the May Day holiday here and uh, seems kind of quiet here. I guess everybody went to their hometowns or something, you know. So uh, while I'm here, I thought I would catch up and uh, try to build up my page with a few more videos for you. Since it's my day off here, I thought I would answer a few questions that you left on my channel. So uh, let's see, we had one from uh, my last video, Hello Uncle Foreigner. They also have a very nice China YouTube channel, a lot of fun. We've been going back and forth, uh, exchanging comments on each other's channels, so I appreciate the conversation. So Hello Uncle Foreigner. And there are two of them. One of them must be an uncle, one must be an aunt. Liking the strange spy sounding track in the back. It's yours, I hope. So yeah, all of the music in my videos is mine, right? I am a musician and uh, those tracks are from uh, a couple of CDs that I made, some independent self-produced CDs. I use the ones that are appropriate for the vibe. Right? So uh, I think the last one was a, a tune called The Griefer. And what's a griefer but a kind of an internet spy, right? So you, you got it. <laughs> you called it. All right? Victor Brown left a comment on my channel. And thank you, Victor, for leaving the comments. Victor Brown is a comment machine. And I really appreciate it. I think, Victor, you found my channel from a comment that I left on Dr. Boyce Watkins' channel, right? I hope I can rise to the occasion because Dr. Boyce Watkins is he's no joke, right? Okay, anyway, but thanks for uh, subscribing to my channel from a comment that I left on Dr. Boyce Watkins' channel. I hope it was a good one because sometimes, sometimes I don't agree with him, you know? Anyway, Victor Brown says, uh, gee whiz, that scooter you were sitting on, at the end of the last video, is it yours? Is it rented? If you could use one, could you tell us about it? What does it cost? Do you need a license? Are there traffic signs in English? What's it like driving one there? Wow, a lot of questions, okay. Uh, yeah, of course, of course it's mine. Okay, and here it is right here. You know, I left it here charging overnight. Okay, so yeah, that's mine. Okay, I've had it for about a year. I featured it in a, a couple of other videos that I've made. Great bike, I really love it. Once I move, I hope I can take it with me. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, I would rather not sell it and have to buy another bike. I did have a scooter when I was up north in uh, Tianjin and it was an electric scooter and uh, I, I loved that one, right? I even took it down here uh, to uh, Taitong with me and uh, I used it for about a month or so until it just broke, just broke in half, you know. So it was a cool bike, but uh, you know, that gave me the opportunity to uh, upgrade to this bike, All right? And I'm very happy with it. Uh, I'll tell you how I got it. Uh, I did buy it. I don't know if you can rent these type of e-bikes. I bought it with the help of uh, one of my students at Webb International when I was teaching here. So right now I'm in the uh, garage here where everybody parks their bikes, right? And this is the charging area. Everybody charges their bikes up here. It costs one RMB to charge your bike. And I guess it's for 240 minutes or something like that. I I'm not sure exactly how long. I just leave it overnight and uh, my bike is charged and it's good for a couple of days. So you can see it's plugged into the wall here. I'm gonna take it out. Okay, and this is the charger. All right, some people don't bother with, with this thing down here. They, they actually take their scooters in the elevator in front of their apartments and they'll, they'll charge it right in front of their apartment so you'll see bikes in the hallway sometimes. You know, kind of tacky, I wouldn't do that, but hey. So another friend of mine also asked about the bike and they asked uh, if, if you lock the bikes and yeah, you know, so it's, it's just like a car, right? And, okay. This is the closest thing to a car that I've ever owned. <laughs> right. So as you see, the seat opens up. I put my charger inside there. You know, sometimes if I have a lot of some extra groceries or, you know, some, some uh, extra things that I don't feel like carrying, I put it in there, put it in the trunk, and close it up like that. 
Okay, and then I have an extra little boogie trunk right there for, I, I, it's too small to really put anything in there. Maybe, I, maybe I'll put my hat in there or something, I, I don't know. But it's, it's good to have just in case you need some extra room. So I'm gonna try something different for this video. I'm actually gonna to try to uh, record some video as I ride the bike and you know, try my best not to get killed. All right, but you know, it's a holiday, so not too many people should be on the road, so it should be okay. All right, you wanna come along? I, I, I promise I'll try to be safe, all right? Come on, come on, it'll be cool, come on. Come on. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. comment was, do I see many accidents? No. By the way, happy May 4th. May the 4th be with you. International Star Wars Day. <laughs> As you know, I'm a hardcore Star Trek fan though. All right? Star Wars is all right. At least the first, first two movies. What is that there? Episode four and five, right? A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Those are my movies. Really, The Empire Strikes Back. I liked Rogue One too. Rogue One was really good. And, uh, but that, that, does, that one doesn't really count, does it? Right? Han Solo, I could care less, man. I, I just, what? Huh? what? I did like um, episode three. The one where the whole prequel series led into episode four. I did like that one, wrapping up the whole Anakin Skywalker thing. So anyway, happy May 4th. May the 4th be with you. And what? This is post-pandemic, but yeah, this is, uh, things are coming back to normal here, you know? You see masks, but a lot of people are not wearing masks. 
People are pretty relaxed and uh, comfortable. And it's a beautiful day out here for sure. So I'm not gonna do too much talking as I'm riding. Because uh, I need to pay attention to the road. And I also, I don't wanna accidentally drop my phone. <laughs> So I'm a little nervous about that too. I need one of those GoPros if I'm gonna do more things like this. I see some China YouTubers and they do these type of things, you know, where they talk and they, you know, they record uh, from their scooters or they record from their motorcycles or their e-bikes and things like that, which is kind of cool. I respect that. But uh, I'm not there yet. I'm not at that level yet. But I do have my own thing, and I hope you like my thing. Others against drink drivers are mad. Stevie. Don't drive drunk. I don't drink, by the way. That's the difference between me and a lot of other China YouTubers. A lot of them drink, you can tell. There's beer drinking expats. That ain't me.
see this whole street is electric bikes, e-bikes. This is the place you go when you want to buy a bike in Taiwan. So this is where I got my bike from, Opai. That's the brand name. I uh, last came here about a year ago. It was over a year ago. And uh, one of my students actually helped me uh, get the bike here, you know, so I paid for the bike. And uh, they got me a pretty good deal here. You know, you have to have some Chinese speaking skills to do it, you know, which I do not have. Somebody helped me out and they came here and uh, they did some negotiation in Chinese and uh, they got me a pretty good deal. So what happens is after you buy the bike, you don't get a license. You don't need a license for it, but you do need to register it. And actually you don't have to do that either, but you know, it's, it's kind of a good idea to do it. So after I bought the bike here, we went to the uh, local police station and uh, we registered it. You know, so they just took my name and registered the number and they gave me the license plate. So there's my registration number right there. So I had a little accident a couple of months ago and, uh, you know, I broke, I broke the mirror in my bike. So uh, she's going to replace the mirror for me. Really didn't need it done. I've been getting by without it. But, you know, if I'm going to sell the bike afterwards, it, it'll help if I have the you know, the mirror replace. I, I still don't know if I'm going to sell it or if I'm just going to um, try to take it down to Hangzhou with me. I don't know. It depends on how much it costs. All right, so I didn't expect that. They, they replaced both mirrors for a 40 RMB. I kind of miss having two mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the bike is 100% now, okay? Before I was 80%, but now it's 100%. <laughs> Looks good. So there you have it. That's the whole deal with my bike here. Opie. Okay, and they do good service over here. And, uh, you know, you can come over here. You can get all the new bikes over here. It's really nice. Okay, that's the story how you get an e-bike here in Taitong. Come out here, get an e-bike. Ride with style. <laughs> I'm G Wiz. I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Do whatever you feel. 